morning, everyone. It is Saturday. This is January 22nd, I believe. I had a nice hot bowl of oatmeal with some granola sort of mixed in. And I had my usual morning cup of coffee, steaming hot black coffee driving hopefully to do a little bit of camping out in this cold right now my car th thermostat says 21 degrees Fahrenheit so we got a lot of got a lot of wind and it's just frigid out I know to a lot of you up north that's probably pretty toasty See a lot of people get stuck in this nine to five routine. And routines are good because you have to keep some consistency in your life. But one thing I've noticed about good things, uh, good patterns in the lives of human beings is that when the good thing, when, when the thing itself becomes a prison, when it becomes chains that hold you down and that bind you, and when when that that thing starts to trap you, uh, suffocate you, however you would describe it, that's when you've got to start cutting some of the chains and, and break, try to break free. I see it as sort of a balance. You know, a lot of the Enlightenment philosophers, like, uh, I believe it was John Locke, who said that man was born free, and yet everywhere he is in chains. There's always, always this persistent balancing act that a person must make in order to keep themselves just free enough just independent enough so that they're not a slave to the uh, collective and to corporations, to status quo, etc. This balancing act, and that's supposed to be what a republic is founded on, is that there's a natural innate in tendency within hierarchies and societies to strangle the freedom and the beauty out of uh, the common populace. And that basically our, our spirit is what rises up to de challenge that and defeat that and to uh, hopefully win the battle. A lot of people do it through religion, through God, but ultimately, ultimately, it it's all on you. It comes down to you. I was listening to an audiobook recording from Alan Watts, and the point of the audio uh, sermon, if you will, was that. Basically, everything in the universe, everything in the world, can be condensed down to a microcosm. Everything, every, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. 
and for, for every for everything that an individual does, you for everything you do, there is a reaction, which means that there are chain reactions based on decisions that you make that ripple throughout our world and ultimately an argument could be made that it ripples out into the universe and possibly other universes if you want to get real crazy uh, but just coming back down to earth what you do matters I've slowly learned that I don't think I've ever really thought that nothing matters, although I've had many people espouse that opinion to me. I disagreed with it then, and I disagree with it now. I think everything matters. We need to get back to the idea that the individual in its essence, is sovereign. In his or her essence, is sovereign. And you ought to be treated as sovereign. More importantly, you ought to treat yourself as something that is sovereign. Considering that you were made from dirt, but you have the breath of God in you. The important part is you have the breath of God in you. See, it's one half of that that atheists, uh, evolutionary biologists, uh, just secularist type people believe in. They believe in the 50% of it is that we come from the dirt. You know, we come from the ground and we shall return to the ground. It's half, it's, it's true, but they're leaving out the second part which is that we have the Spirit of God within us, and it's almost undeniable if you're paying attention. So anyway, I guess what I'm saying is we got to not let these corporations, these billionaires, special interest groups, not to sound... Uh, you know, like a freaking communist hippie, but the special interest groups, the upper 1%, we've got to not let them come down on us so hard that they crush our spirits to dust. Because we are more than dust. We are more than clay from the earth. So much more. Consistent visitors here who are just not cleaning up after themselves. They're just, you know, I guess they just come in here and drink and party or whatever. But man, they, you know, they don't take care of what they're doing. That's no way to treat the land. Especially state land like this, you know. People try to take care of this place and you come in, you dump a bunch of plastic, aluminum. It's, it's sad, it's not good to see.
There's a lot of junk up there. <laughs> I mean, it just goes to show how inconsiderate people are. That they just dump stuff. They don't take the time to be responsible about cleaning up after a campsite. And I'm not an environmentalist. I just know it's trashy and it's irresponsible. And you want to leave a place looking at least as good, you know, as when you came in there. That's just my opinion how it should be. So I'm like, Go ahead and try to start this fire with a flint. Flint and magnesium. All this little brush here. You wanna make sure it's real dry. Make your nest. And then scrape this onto the nest. That's not a bad little fire. I'm gonna keep adding to it for maybe 45 minutes to an hour. That's what I get for not bringing a backup battery. I do have a backup battery and a charger, but uh, it's the battery's bad. I need to order a new one. So I just gotta get on that store and order a new camera battery. Roll myself a bugler cigarette real quick. Yeah. Okay. 